Good evening, friends, all of this channel members. Hope you're all doing very well. Um, yeah, little typo in the uh, opening there. You're, uh, you're right, Dark. We're not on the A330-600F. What's one of those? Do they even exist? Probably not. Um, we're, of course, in the Airbus A300-600 uh, freight cargo variant looking beautiful. I love this livery. Th this, is, this is reason enough to fly this aircraft. This filthy UPS livery. It just looks like a proper workhorse of an aircraft. I think it's uh, it's gorgeous. Um, yes, we're in Harrisburg. We're flying a real uh, a real world route. Harrisburg to the newly released uh, Rockford Airport, which is in Chicago. Um, now, this flight tonight is going to take us about two hours, so we're not going to we're not going to muck about. We're going to get uh, we're going to get straight on, so otherwise we're going to have a late night. This I did not realise at the time of planning the flight. Che check this out. <laughs> um, okay, there's my operational flight plan. What do you think I'm looking at there? What what is jumping out at me? And I'm just thinking, oh hell, um, this is going to take forever. Uh, <laughs> I'll <laughs> type it in when you spotted it. Um, but yeah, well, uh, welcome everybody. Hope you've all had a good Wednesday. Um, big shout out as always to our channel members coming on board tonight. Hey, uh, hey, Nolex, legend of course, Dark Fury, Jog, Lulu, Sav is here as well. Orbi, Leon, is it the cost index? No, although that is quite impressive. Something on there is even higher than the cost index and it's not in our favour. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Helgo, and welcome to those of you watching on Twitch as well. Yeah, you've got it, Nusil. You've got it in one. That is a ridiculous... Um, <laughs> that is a ridiculous trip wind. Have you seen that? <laughs> the trip wind. 105 knots headwind. <laughs> no wonder it's going to take us so bloody long to get there. <laughs> so, we're... Um, we're going to need to get started. <laughs> Quick. Um... We don't operate this as a, a proper full sort of real ops uh, flight because I don't know how to fly this aircraft uh, correctly. Um, but we uh, will fly just like any other Airbus, and that is uh, just ensure everything's uh, lights out and uh, and all good. Anyway, should we jump on board? Um, we will in a moment. Actually, let's just go through this. So yeah, very quickly, obviously in the US of A, we're on Vatsim as well. Thirty-four thousand feet is the plan. Um, and uh, just uh, 15 and a half tons of fuel, CNR 4.2. I mean, it's not going to be a million miles away, is it? Uh, we've got uh, O'Hara is the uh, is the alternate. Don't think we've got any. Um, yeah, we've got no terrain no to worry about our flight today. Um, look at that for a, uh, a headwind on the departure. Already, it's sort of 23, 24 knots just uh, on the headwind for departure. Great for performance. Um, so that's uh, that's fine. Ten knot crosswind coming in at Rockford. Uh, what else have we got on here? Anything we need to really worry about? Uh, Rockford potentially. Oh, at the moment it's gusting 21, but visibility is fine, so that's uh, good. So yeah, just getting a bit gusty at uh, Rockford a little bit later on. I don't think I've ever landed this aircraft in gusty conditions, so that could be uh, that could be interesting a little bit later on. Uh, Harrisburg Hotel is close to aircraft with a wingspan more than 180 feet. I don't actually know what the wingspan is of the A300. Anybody, anybody know that? Someone will Google that for us, I'm sure. Um, so that's hotel. Uh, that's off for uh, for us. Other than that, there's nothing there that we need to worry about. We might have a look at the uh, no times and a little bit for, uh, for Rockford as we uh, as we come in. Well, let's just sit to the uh, to the bottom and have a look at this, uh, the weather. So that's our flight room, gorgeous flight. I love flying in America, you know I love flying in America. Um, oh my god, we're literally, look at that, the peak of the jet stream is literally on our flight room. 
Oh. Yeah. Should have flown the other way. Right. So, what fuel are we going to take? Let's have a quick look. Uh, we can take quite a bit, actually. Let's take um, Rockford's new airport. There might be a bit of traffic. Um, and in case we muck it up, because I'm not used to the aircraft. Let's take 18 tons of fuel. So 18 tons of fuel, get that loaded and once we're right in the aircraft. Um, now we've got the new Navigraph as well, we can now draw on this, which is just lovely. Uh, but I don't know if anyone else has found this, I'm finding this app to be really slow whenever I'm changing uh, charts and things like that, I'm tapping the departure view, and it used to be instant. I don't know if I just need to restart my tablet or something, everything else seems to be fine. Um, we're at the cargo ramp 2, nice short pushback, uh, so it's going to be a Tango, Foxtrot, Alpha, we've got full length, um, so a very short taxi out, and then uh, you may have just seen actually the uh, the departure view, well it's straight out, and once we're happy to turn towards the first waypoint, we'll the terrain up uh, there, look to the north, um, northwest, but that is the departure overview, it's not exactly the most detailed, I think my nine-year-old could have planned that chart. So, yeah, it is quite quite simplistic on um, on the ground. Anyway, let's uh, let's get in. Uh, OB forty-four meter wingspan. Is that all? That's cool. Okay, let's um, let's get in our aircraft. But yeah, just absolutely gorgeous aircraft. We've got custom scenery as well for Harrisburg as well this uh, this evening. And as you can see. It looks, it looks fantastic. I just love this livery. I think this is an awesome livery. Uh, TTV, did they fix the A300? I've not seen any problems with it. I think it's, uh, I think it's a gorgeous aircraft. Um, so, uh, let's see if we GSX our way through this. Should we get a, uh, get some boarding done? Uh, oh, who's going to load it? We've got a UPS as an option. UPS an option? Yes, there we go. UPS can load our aircraft up. Fantastic. Okay, love this aircraft, although I don't like the yoke, so we're going to get that out of the way. Right, let's set our aircraft up as uh, as we would. Uh, we don't need to replace the tyres, let's just go back here. Uh, first of all, we've got the flight, that's all sorted, I've already imported that. Um, ground equipment, that's fine, Yeah, looks like uh, GSX is doing its thing. Weight and balance, I want to apply that load to the aircraft. So that should be done automatically. Uh, I don't think this syncs with GSX, so I might be wrong. We'll double check that as we go. Um, but aircraft, as per uh, as per usual, is in its turnaround state. So uh, before I get any further, we've got no ATC here on the ground where we are. Um, at least I don't think we have. Um, no, don't think we have. Uh, we've got auto ATC. We've got a squawk code from them, so we'll sort that in uh, in a bit. Uh, where is the? Where do we get the meta from? Is that on here? Oh yes, here we go. Uh, just get the latest one. So this information I need. Gusting 33 knots. Yep. So feel that as we go down. Slight from the right as we're departing. And two nine five six is the uh, altimeter. That's quite low, isn't it? Okay. So usual stuff. Uh, they should be on. Got the nav logo lights on. And just go up uh, here. Ideas 1, 2 and 3 are on, we just need to align those. Uh, we can leave that for now, yeah, get some gallon power on. We're on ground power at the moment, so we'll get all our pumps on as uh, as well. That's fine. Let's come across here, because I can't actually see otherwise. Um, lights out, yeah. As per, <coughs> as per usual. That's all fine. Don't need APU bleed on at the moment. APU is not on, obviously, so that's all fine as it is there. No smoking, of course. That should uh, should be on. Um, I think refueling's just been completed, hasn't it? So we'll check that in uh, check that in a moment. Where is the fuel gauge? 
There's a fuel gauge on this thing. Might be down here actually. Uh, da -da -da -da. Check that. Fuel is. Oh, I think we actually might be. Ref we are refueling then at the minute, I think. Yeah, we're refueling at the minute, so to be fair, those uh, seagull signs should be remaining off anyway, so that's fine. We'll wait till that's all done, then we'll turn on the ore dampness, pitch trim, ATS, etc., and then we can start setting up the autopilot. Uh, right, uh, other things then to check. We need to make sure that um, parking brake is on, thrust levers fine, spoilers, flaps levers, they're all fine as well. Uh, let me just jot down that squawk code. 2774 is the squawk, so we'll check that in a moment. And let's crack on with uh, with the box setup then. Now, altimeter is 2956, that's already set. Lovely. Okay, good stuff. Okay, let us. Um, Initiate the flight. Align the IRS. There we go. So I've just got that set to be instant, so then it's, uh, it's a little bit quicker. Okay, let's get the flight plan up and set this. So cost index is 100. That seems excessive. Right, cost index 100, uh, call sign UPS1173. Of course, we're in America, aren't we? It should be 1173. Never accuracy is upgraded. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm happy to leave the Tropo, um, although it is out by quite a bit, actually. Go on, then we'll update that. Uh, it should be 31,438. There we go. Cruise winds, oh, I think they've already been downloaded, so that's uh, that's all in. Let's have a look then at the flight plan. So, departing here. Um, standard instrument departure. Why have I not got the... Uh, Runway, oh, it's there. Standard instrument departure, uh, runway 31. Insert. There is no literal standard instrument departure, it's just straight out direct to the Harrisburg VOR. And then at the other end, Rockford, uh, runway 01. And it's the quote 1 arrival. Uh, is it the Kenny transition or the Heo uh, Capone? Ah, uh, it's the Capone one. <laughs> I see what they did there. <laughs> Chicago and a bit of Al Capone. Fair enough. Okay, good. So, uh, 625 miles I've got on the operational flight plan. That should sort itself out in a minute. We'll get some more uh, more figures there. Radnav page, we don't have that. But have we got a frequency for Harrisburg VOR? We should have an operational flight plan. There it is, 1535. So, in case we need it. Uh, oh, actually, I think that only comes alive if we're actually going to be um, using the uh, using the VRs, but we're not. We're going to leave it in uh, leave it in nav mode. So that's okay. Just check what the flight plan looks like. There we go. Straight out to the right to the Harrisburg VOR. So that's set and that's fine. Hey, Christian. Good to see you. Uh, Talvin, do we still use FS Realistic? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I do forget to start it though. It used to start automatically. It doesn't do that anymore. So I have to start it manually, which is a bit of a pain. Uh, David, this is the EasyJet layout um, for obvious reasons. <laughs> All right, onto our init B page then. So block fuel uh, looks like we're we're not fully loaded yet because what did I want? I wanted 18 tons. Ah, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Ah. Weight and balance. 
block fuel. Yeah, can we update that please? 18 tons. So hopefully now has that uh, has that done? I need some more fuel, please. I don't think JSX is handling refueling. Uh, request refueling. I don't think I really do want to. I just want you to give me some more fuel. Why has it gone back to 15.6? I don't want 15.6. I would like 18 tons. I don't want to fly with plug fuel. Alright. Oh, that's frustrating. Oh, hang on. Am I doing it in the wrong place? Ah, oh, I might need to do it up here. Hang on. Try that instead. Yeah, oh, there we go. Look, it's, it's updating. Cool. Okay, so we're going to take 18 tons of fuel. There we go. Uh, so our zero fuel weight uh, is going to be 122.5. Fuel for our alternate if we need it. Two tons. Yeah, I realised the OFP was on screen, apologies for that. You didn't miss anything. I'm using the OFP now anyway. Why can't I update the uh, alternate fuel? That's a bit annoying. Zero fuel at CFG is 30.39, so 30.4. Can I not update the alternate fuel? No, it doesn't like that. Oh well, that's frustrating. All the fuel is now loaded. And we've got a takeoff CFG of 32.6. And a takeoff weight of 140.1 32.6 is that takeoff CFG all right take off performance calculations then uh, let's try and sync that that's not right we want runway 31 full length it has been raining recently, so we'll go with wet figures. That's fine. Uh, Takeoff weight was one four zero point one. Flaps fifteen fifteen. Air conditioning be on. Uh, anti ice is off. Temperature is fourteen degrees. Don't need that. No need to force toga and calculate. Lovely. 34, 34, 44. Okay, so. 1, 3, 4. 1, 3, 4. And 1, 4, 4. However, for that, we can now turn these on. Whilst I'm doing that, we're almost ready to go, so we're going to get the APU started. So we'll turn that on and start our APU. There we go, that's V2, 144, that's set. We'll leave the engine out, acceleration, thrust, uh, reduction, uh, etc. There's nothing in the charts to suggest it's going to be any different than uh, 100 feet AGL, so... 
flex is 63 and the trim's 32 and a half There we go, uh, that's all set. So I think that uh, we're pretty much good to go. Four cabins that's closed, that's fine. But we're pretty much all there. An initial climb will go 5,000 feet. Uh, runway heading for our departure is 308. So I'll just wind that in. And something tells me in the back of my mind somewhere that um, DH needed to be set to uh, this needed to be set to minus five. I have no idea why that is. It is just something that I remember seeing at uh, some point. All right, so let's just clear the fuel page. A squawk was two seven seven four. And we're on Uticom already. Awesome. Right. How's our uh, how's our APU doing? APU is available. Wonderful. So that means we can now uh, get the APU bleed on, which is over here. That's all fine. And with the APU powering our aircraft, we can switch off external power. Refuel is complete. Seatbelt signs on. Seems to be brightening up, brightening up a little bit now, doesn't it? Although that looks quite uh, that looks quite wet over there. Good stuff. So I think let's get the doors closed. We'll get GSX into position, and then we'll do the checklists. That can come off. That can go. Close the doors. Let's get GSX into position. Oh, are they still loading up? How long is this going to take? I don't actually have time for you to load my aircraft up. It's a long flight. Okay. We might just uh, do away with that. It looks nice and pretty, but they don't seem to be doing anything. So, um... Let me just reset that position. We'll just get rid of all of that, and we'll get the ground crew into position in a moment. Before I do that, then, let me just see... Mass caution light... Right forward camera's not closed. Yeah, it didn't realise bomb tape that we had to manually open that door. I thought GSX would uh, sort it out, but clearly not. Doors are all closed now. Wonderful. APU's up and running. Where's my checklist? Is it in the... is it in here? Nope. Where do I find the checklist in this thing? Oh, it's there. Okay, before I start checklist then, so copy preparation is all completed. Fuel quantity, we've checked, we've got uh, 18 tonnes in. I'm going to double check that now, make sure that is the case. Yeah, 18 tonnes checked. Takeoff data has been confirmed, landing elevation is... Oh, that's a good point. I forgot we have to do that in this. Uh, 310, which we set here. 
There we go. That's the landing elevation of this airport as well, in case we have to come back and land here for whatever reason. Altimeter is set, and skid should be on. Windows and doors are closed, and before we actually start to push them, we'll make a com on Unicom, and we'll get to, we'll get the beacon lights on, etc. So, pef, pef push back and departure. Have we got a UPS crap? Of course we want a UPS, yes. There they go. Hatchberg Ground UPS 1173, one, 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 cargo, cargo ramp, ramp Parkinson, Parkinson 2, two. and we'll be uh, uh, pushing uh, back, back to Tango. Tango. Hello, Captain. We are ready for pushback. Beacon light on. Transponder on. Checks completed. Bypass pin inserted. So let's just have a quick look behind us. See what is uh, what is there. That's going to be interesting. How are they going to how are they going to do this? I reckon we push back to the left. Hopefully, not in the way of the circle. Locking gear. Push back over here, then we can taxi out this way. It just depends how good the ground crew are actually going to be, isn't it? Guess we'll find out. This is why we went for wet figures, of course. Now we can see some rain on the ground. Uh, yeah, okay, let's go tail left and see what happens. All right, so beacon light is on. Parking brake is uh, set. Release parking brake. Parking brake's released. Commencing push. All engines clear. Start at will. Okay then. So at start and start engine one. Okay, so I think when this gets to about 20% that we throw the fuel in. Okay, there we are, that's done. Right, I need to keep an eye on this pushback though. I'm just going to whack that FedEx aircraft and then I'm going to have to uh, stop the push. Might not be too bad actually. Okay, I'll give them a bit of credit there. That's uh, that's been smartly done. That's better than I expected them. Cool. Set parking brakes. Parking brakes set. Clearly not the first time they've done that. Alright, so engine one is stabilized, starting engine two. Tow truck disconnected. Bypass pin removed. Left is clear. Right is clear. Okay, so she's telling us we'll clear both sides. Look how there's a wire aircraft in the cargo ramp. Must have a load of pineapples on board. Right, so she's clear, tug's clear. 
Let's throw fuel into engine two. Hey, HD, look at you with the knowledge. <laughs> How you doing, mate? <laughs> Does it bloody matter? I've got a short taxi. I'm starting them both. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, William is is a wire a contract for Amazon Prime? Really? <laughs> you could be BSing me, William, I, and I, I would I would believe you. Just the same as everything HD says. <laughs> <laughs> See, I knew you wouldn't have a clue. But we all believed you because you said it with such authority. Right, engine number two is looking happy as well. Alright, so engine one, engine two is happy then. Um, we can pop this to continuous uh, relight now, I think. There we are, that's done. APU is not needed anymore, so that can come off. Anti-ice isn't needed, it's too warm. And so, oh, arm the spoilers. That's it, that's done. And then 15 15 for the flaps. Set the trim in a minute. I'll just check these flaps come down. They're so slow. It's probably because they're huge. Um, and what was that trim value? Uh, oh, this is old fashioned. They don't have percents on it. I need the actual up and down information on that. Uh, where are you? Performance. It is 0 0.1 down. Okay. So, about that'll do. Alright, so I think we are good to go. So the after start checklist pitch trim has been set 0.1 down, rudder is zero, spoils are on, slaps flaps check 15-15, he cam status, relight, yeah, parking brake, fine, yeah, okay, nothing there looks like it's too concerning. Anti-ice is off, hand signal's been received, and let's uh, let's move on. So, where are we going? Tango Fox Alpha. Fine. No flight control check, full left. And full right. No idea. That's up. I've got no idea where the flight controls are. They don't change automatically. Have we got an actual page that we need to put on to do the check? Yeah. Well, full down. Full up. Full right. Full left. Rudder. Full right. Full left. Neutral. Okay, that all looks fine. Let's get that off. God, the Airbus is so much easier. I know it's an Airbus, but I meant the 320. Harrisburg, traffic, UPS 1173, taxiing Tango, Foxtrot, Alpha, full length departure, runway 31. Alright, taxi like, uh, auto brake max. I think I've just caught that trim wheel by mistake. Yep, I did. God, that's. Oh my word, that's sensitive. Ah! We don't like that. That's fine. Uh, weather radar is... Where's the weather radar? Ah, oh, there it is. There we go. Set to weather. Should be on turbulence as well, but it doesn't make any difference because it doesn't work. Um. Okay, oh actually it might be working. Not that it's a real picture, but... And TO config. Let's check. Press and hold. 
Nothing's beeping at me. Excellent. Parking brake release. Let's roll. Just staying to the left side of this line because we had the FedEx aircraft just there and I wanted to just steer clear of that. Look at that rain shaft. Oh, it's below it. Well, we've got we've got 33 knots gusting down the runway, and you can absolutely see that. Sim's looking great as uh, as that is. Force aircraft. And we'll get the autopilot set as well in a moment. But remember, it is a short taxi, so I'm not in a rush to uh, to get through it. There's still a couple of things that we want to check. We've still got the uh, before takeoff checklist to do. There, it's not called a taxi checklist on that. left down here and that's full length departure just there. The sun's shining. Have we got a rainbow? Oh we do. A little bit just there look. See? Ah oh, it's it so is like real life. <laughs> Quick sun shining in this rain. Where is it? Okay, so flight controls have been checked, flight instruments are checked, we've done our briefing, V1, VR, V2 has been inserted and checked, flap slats done, takeoff config is normal for takeoff, our transponder is set, TCAS will do in a moment, we'll, in fact we'll continue below the line once we're, uh, once we're ready to go. Looks like it's a little bit uphill this, we'll just give it a bit more juice. Uh, 76 driver, it's a 3060 graphics card. Oh there you go, thank you William for uh, for calling that up. God this is bumpy. Okay, uh, let's just uh, hold that there. Alright, that approach path looks clear. Harrisburg traffic UPS 1173, departing runway 31 via Alpha, straight out and uh, to the northwest. Okay, lights. TCAS, TARA. I'll just nudge that again. Packs leaving on. Transponder set, TCAS TRA, auto brake, max ignition, it's continuous relight. Right, let's, uh, let's line up and go. <coughs> so, just a reminder we've got very strong wind, most of it's a headwind, a little bit from the right. That looks amazing. Look at that. Look at the rain shaft at the end of the runway. Can't see the end of the uh, runway because of the strong wind and rain that's coming in. That is, that is phenomenal. Awesome. So, uh, take off. Start the timer. 
Let's go. I think I've got the sounds of the engines turned down far too much. I'll have to turn those back up. V1. Rotate. That's a lot smoother now we're in the air. And straight into the rain. Okay, that's positive climb. Gear up. Nav. Okay, so let's drop the nose. Not that much. Ah, autopilot one's now engaged. So that's slats only now, flaps coming up. We're past S speed. Looks okay. I'll tidy that up in a minute. I'm going to turn the sound up in a moment. I just needed to get through the departure. It does sound a bit strange not having any uh, engine noise, doesn't it? Okay, and uh, we're now clean. Spoilers disarmed. No air traffic control around, so let's continue our climb. And we'll go flight level 200. <laughs> HD says that's what's like having uh, air in our headset. Sounds like it's really as quiet as that. That means you can't hear if an engine rolls back. You can probably feel it. Right, so tat is within icing range. We are going through moisture, so let's get the uh, let's get the anti ice on. And we're climbing flight level two hundred, so. Right, plan is 340, max is fine, so let's wind her up. And 340 blue. And we'll just now sit and watch that wind coming straight towards us in a moment. 110 knot headwind overall, that's just, that's crazy.
just realised we weren't in nav mode, we were in head mode. So, fuck that. It's fine. We're not really uh, off course by, uh, by much at all. Love that view. I always said I love flying over America. I mean, the scenery there is uh, is gorgeous. And there's an airport, sort of, every five miles in America. Particularly the built-up areas. Every two miles in cities. All the municipal airports and stuff like that that you don't really get in Europe. Cool, right. On our way. Getting above that cloud there, there as well now, so we'll probably get that anti ice back off. Give us some more performance to those engines. Oh, I didn't know that worked. Does that actually work? The sun's not low enough for me to check that out. So, I don't know the exact rules and standard operating procedures for this, but um, let me just see about signs while well, that matters. Uh, but I don't think continuous relight needs to be on anymore. Hey, Randall Forty, good to see you. Says he lives pretty close to Rockford, known as the City of Pity to neighbouring cities. The city. That's Oh, that, that makes me feel really sorry for it. Uh, HD, we're going to fly 250 knots all the way there? No. But I'm going to... Uh, we can just climb up to cruise with this. It's not going to take us long to get there for all 250. To be fair, is it, are we still on push-pull? telling us it's preset. Actually, it will do. We're in level change. If we go to profile, there you go. Profile climb, profile thrust. Keep forgetting about these slight nuances between the two. Between the old air buses and the newer ones. That looks good. I love the ridge, with all the forest on it. We're just going to sit and cry and watch this wind get stronger and stronger. Hey, Andy. <laughs> Let this piggy fly. Uh, yeah, so what are we at? We're at 90 knots at the minute. Wonderful. One of the things I do always forget to do, though, and, and that is um, that's push the heading just to line it up. I'm so glad that in later Airbuses, the uh, the 320 onwards, that you, you didn't have to do that. The moment you pulled heading, it just pulled it to whatever heading you were currently flying at. So, have we got a predicted time to get there? There doesn't look that much information in this, uh, in this box. Oh, there we go. Looking at this, just before 10 o'clock UTC time. That'd work, that'd work for me. Uh, Bombtech says, yeah, this is like a Boeing-style aircraft, uh, Boeing-style Airbus. Which, do you know what, I don't mind because... People always want me to try a Boeing aircraft. I'll stick with this, I'll fly this instead. 
I'll fly this, and it's the, the best of both worlds. Some Boeing, uh, Boeing parts, but with Airbus ergonomics. Where's that checklist one? So I have to take off and climb. So slaps, flaps, they've been retracted. Gear is up, and oh, we have to set it to neutral. You see, this is a Boeing thing. Having to put that to neutral. That's that's Boeing. Packs are on. We never turn them off. And Altimer is set to standard pressure. Uh, Eurotexan says this is far more sophisticated than the Boeing in the, uh, of the day. This thing was so advanced for its day. I, you know, the proof is still there. There's still plenty of them flying, aren't there? Plenty of cargo jets um, flying. Literally the route that we're flying right now, actually. So... They're not at the end of their life yet. Not, not by a long shot. don't know if there's any passenger A300s flying. There are A310s. I think there are a couple of A300s flying passenger jets. Um, not many, though. I don't know if, like, Iraq, Iran Airlines have, uh, have them. <laughs> Fubat says the door stem as well. <laughs> uh... Bombtech says the inner builds brings us a, a glass cockpit version too. I mean, I, d I do, I, I really like this aircraft. Remember, you can also get this on offer at the minute. It's 15% off. Um, so yeah, there's obviously payware, but you can get 15% off this aircraft uh, right now if you buy both this and the Rockford Airport that we're flying to today. So if you really want to kickstart your cargo, um, virtual flights in Korea, then now is a great time to do it. Uh, the link's in the video description or at the top of the chat if you watch it as well on YouTube. Um, but yeah, go and grab, um, go and grab the uh, Rockford Airport and the Innerbuilds A300 aircraft and uh, get 15% off as well, which is uh, quite a good deal if you uh, if you haven't got either of them, because. <coughs> As cargo aircrafts go, I do feel that this is probably the best cargo aircraft available in Maxon Flight Simulator at the moment. Uh, HTC says, as far as... Uh, as far as knows, Airbus nicked a lot of Boeing bits when they built the aircraft. Um, I'm not sure about the logic. I, I think the Airbus logic is it's all Airbus, isn't it? Um, like you say, though, it, a lot of the stuff was probably known, but Airbus just knew how to improve on it and implement it. I mean, I would take this overhead panel here. I would take this overhead panel over a 737 overhead panel in a heartbeat. This is just... Yeah, it's... It's ergonomic, it makes sense. So, hydraulics, easy, they're all there. Flaps, slats, servers, etc., all there. Um, your flight controls, speed brakes, spoilers, um, your flight recorder, very similar, uh, anyway, to what we've got. Uh, the ideas at the top, they're obviously there. Ooh, obviously, like the fire, uh, fire pool. But then your electrical power, and what I really like, I'd, I'd still take this on, uh, on the A320s and uh, uh, and above. I really like the green lines. I know that's daft, but that's just me. I like the logic of seeing what is going where. And, you know, it just... It just makes sense. Where... The 737 flight deck, I just look at them and have palpitations. Uh, Lulu says the door may stay on, but the rudder enjoys freeing itself from the aircraft. <laughs> Well, we, we uh, <laughs> probably shouldn't talk about the rudder with the 737s either. I mean, what a checkered history that's had. But Lulu, I think we all appreciate the 777 seven, seven that you 
you used to fly. That's uh, you know, that had a pretty, pretty good safety record as well, didn't it? In terms of aircraft um, maintenance and uh, the standard of it. I think there has been some dodgy piloting of it at some point. Was it a triple seven that landed short of? Was it San Francisco? Some somewhere like that. Was it? I'm, I can't remember if it was San Francisco. There was a Boeing aircraft came in and just slammed into the seawall, landed short. It was pilot error. I, I forget what airline it was. I want to say a, a Korean airline triple seven. I might be wrong. Someone in chat will know what I'm on about. Oh, it was a Korean, uh, San Francisco. Thank you, Lulu. Yeah. I mean, that's got to be one of those moments where you, as uh, a working 777 pilot, as you presumably were back then, um, that's got to be one of those moments where you just sit there with your head in your hands and think, how? Uh, Martin, do I use the Toby? Not when I'm streaming, Martin. No, no. Um, uh, as I explained in the, in the recent video of it, it, um, <sighs> it, it would, with all the monitors and screens I've got in front of me, I, I'd be doing this all the time, and you don't want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not reading that out HD, but everyone else can read it. <laughs> Why have I never heard that joke before? <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that before. <laughs> oh, I can't tell my I can't tell my son that joke. I have to wake his older. Uh, Martin, when not streaming, if I'm messing about with some J aircraft, which I do do it occasionally, you know, from time to time, me and my son uh, enjoy it. So yeah, um, I do I do have it on then. And I really, I actually quite like it in um, in the passenger window. Um, I, I think you know, it add, it does add something to it—a little bit of a uh, little bit of head movement in the passenger window. Mate, we've all missed you. Uh, Martin, is it worth it? I don't want to give you. I, I don't want to tell you whether it's worth it or not. I think this is one of the things that you have to make. Uh, do your research and. Uh, make your own decision. I, I would say if you fly airliners most of the time, then no, probably not. If you fly GA aircraft, then you probably get a lot more out of it. Yeah. So that, 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 I don't know if anyone else in the chat has got any uh, information to help you with that, Martin, for anyone that might use the, uh, might use the Toby Eye Tracker. Of course, because they've got 15% off at the moment, haven't they? Are you on a night stop somewhere, HD? Are you, are you bored, in, bored in a hotel somewhere with some dodgy Wi-Fi? Uh, what are we at? 33. Okay, 1,000 feet to go. I think Chicago Centre might be online, you know. Might get some ATC in a little bit. HD, that sounds awfully close to <laughs> taking a break from your other half. <laughs> uh, Lulu, so much for the moderate turbulence at the top of climb, seems okay to me. Yeah, well, well, that's, what's that? That's top of climb now. Uh, where was the moderate turbulence? Oh, yeah, okay, well, I suppose, 
What is it? What's the magic number? For the sheer rate, if you started to get close to... Uh, is it 8? Uh, well, that's 7.3. Then... That's uh, that's sort of when you, I think you can start to feel it a little bit. But no, you're right. It's, it's okay at the moment. It's, we're moving up and down a little bit, but I certainly wouldn't say it's... Uh, I wouldn't say it's noticeable. That looks quite good. That said, I can't remember what I've got my turbulence setting set to. I think I've got my turbulence setting in the sim set to low. And that's because of the Phoenix aircraft. I should probably turn it back to realistic for, uh, for other aircraft. That's HD confirming for me. It, 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 it sh Max year 8, once it starts to get above 8, that's when you can tell the cabin crew to uh, maybe hang fire with the uh, with the heavy drink service. Not that we've got any cabin crew today, of course. It's just you and me, guys. Right, well, that is top of climb. So, uh, TCAS. So we uh, I'll set that to below. Uh, where are we doing that then? Okay, yeah, there we are. Set TCAS to below. Uh, we'll have a rad nav page to clear out as such, so leave that where it is. Uh, we do have a secondary flight plan, but I was just not doing real ops and I didn't bother setting that up for the engine out procedure, so um, I thought what we can do though is we can copy the active flight plan though, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. Uh, what I do hate is the fact that in order to... Uh, I, I'm so glad that they moved the SD buttons um, up here. We'll, sw we'll swap this out for the radio because you've got the, the monitors up there, but I've, I've got to be, you know, I've got to use my head. This might be where an eye tracker is useful. That's fine. AC. They've also simplified this as well. How many, how many buttons they got here? They've got different ones for AC and DC. If you can get failures in this aircraft, I know the system's depth is uh, is pretty decent, but I'm not sure about um, not sure about failures. Forty three miles away from Avir, we'll do a fuel check when we get there. Then APU's off. Degrees on the brake temperatures. That's fine. Never actually looked at this low pedestal to see what we've, uh, see what we've got. Now, good trim, weather, and they should probably be set to turbulence. Weather radar, I'll leave that where it is. I've just got some lights for the uh, pedestal. Don't need those. Bright daytime. Should be monitoring the guard frequency. I don't think we are. Uh, is that VHF 2? Can't see. That's VHF 2. So that should be monitoring. Uh, 1, 2, 1, that's 5. Never hear anyone broadcast around, so I don't have to broadcast on that. Anyway. Uh, HD, try the fuel imbalance procedure. I'm not going to find that on here, am I? And the last time we made it up, it didn't end well. Hey Jordan, good to see you.
<laughs> I'm not sure it helps the right word. Uh, Eurotexan says they, um, they they put the APU meter behind the first officer's seat. Have they? Is that where it's meant to be? Like I said, I, I don't know this area. Oh, look, we can, we can break the glass if we need to. Why can I select that? Oh! <laughs> uh, that's slightly concerning. <laughs> I, I've clicked it and it's disappeared. Why do I feel now the next time I touch something, I'm going to put a window through? Huh. Oh god, how do, I, how do I put it back? <laughs> okay. Um, I, the circuit breakers, do these work? I'm not going to pull any, I just want to know if they work, I don't think they do. It did look a bit more severe than a ruler, that, I'll give you that. Clearly, though, it looks like it hasn't been well used, looking at the, uh, <laughs> the way the sun's faded, the, uh, the flight deck around it. <laughs> Alex says it's for the gravity landing gear, is it? it? It honestly looked like a way to break the glass to get out in an emergency. Uh, oh my god, it is, it's there. Oh, don't touch that. <laughs> oh god, I don't want to touch... Ugh. How do I put that back? Oh god, I'm going to end up extending the gear down at 34,000 feet. Yeah, well... Let's just get back in our seat and look forward. We're not going to. Uh, <laughs> we're not going to touch that. Let's just. Let's just forget that's not there. Right. Ignore that. Andy, it, um, if the um, if COM2 is causing an issue with you, hearing yourself reading back, it, it's fine. All you need to do is just go into vPilot and, and just type in dot .com2. Change the frequency. So, I don't know, 121.5, we'll monitor guard frequency. There you go. So now you'll not hear, uh, you'll not hear yourself back. Alex says just click on the red at the bottom, not the top, presumably. What, so if I, if I click down here, I'm going to put it back where it belongs. I'm not going to extend my gears, am I? If, if you break my aircraft, Alex, I, I won't be happy. John says it's like me the first time you opened the window in the Phoenix. Were you at 34,000 feet? <laughs> oh no, you were on the ground trying to work out how to close it. Yeah, the little, the little uh, latch that you need to operate. And now, uh, see, Alex, I was literally about to press it until you just typed into the chat. Yes, it should put it back. I'm not a fan of the word should. Lulu only wanted to find out. So I've got an aircraft which is flying absolutely fine. Nothing is broken. Nothing is wrong. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Nah, HD, I don't believe you. You never thought for a moment you pressed the top button. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna do it. We'll, we'll put it back then. It better return. Oh, thank God for that. I swear, HD, you just come on chat uh, on stream now to try and break my aircraft. You're bored of the normal flights now. <laughs> Dark Fury, do it, do it, do it. Voila, Alex. Voila. Thank you, my man. I won't go as far as to say I'll now believe everything you say, but you've earned yourself some credibility.
<laughs> HD doing his best Arnie voice. Do it. Do it now. Dark. I don't think we've seen that one. We've only we've only flown the uh, the Alpine livery. We need to fly the other two, don't we? Let's see what you've got waiting for us on those new liveries. New liveries, HD. You mean he means new livery. Uh, Martin, do I change sensitivity settings between the aircraft? No, t I, I don't, Martin. No, I, I leave them all exactly the same. Cool, so in about an hour's time, we should be on our approach, which is always fun in an aircraft you're unfamiliar with. Try our best not to crash it. We're in America, aren't we? We'll probably just get a visual. I can't fly this thing visual. I want the ILS. <laughs> Jordan, mate, thank you so much. Gifting an easy jet in final channel membership. Thank you, Jordan. Randall Forte with the recipient. 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 <laughs> Cheers, Jordan. Really do appreciate that. And definitely one of the best ways to help support the channel. Oh. Right, well, whilst everything's looking nice, uh, how long till I do that fuel check? Uh, oh, we'll do it now, we're at Cody. Okay. Uh, so, what did we take? Um, ah, we took... We took 18 tons of fuel. Plug was about one five. What is it? Five eight seven. I'm being very lazy. I'm using the calculator. Um, contingency fuel was about 500. So we've got 2.9, 2.9 tons. Um, what have I got in the tanks? Let's have a look in a moment. We've just got to. Where did I say? Cody. Uh, so 9.8. So we should have about 12.7 tons. Let's have a look. Oh, we've got 30.8. We're good. We're fine. Beautiful. Ah, <gasps> uh, the legend living up to his name. Dark Fury also gifting five easy jets in final channel memberships as uh, as well. Uh, welcome to our new members, Andy, tenured Amoeba. Doctor on board. Good to see you, Doctor. Always good to have a doctor on board. Shao and Chris Clarkson as uh, as well. Thank you, Dark Fury. Welcome to our new channel members. Uh, Andy, even with visual clearance, you can use the ILS to your discretion. Yeah, absolutely. What? I, I think, particularly as I, I, I would be unfamiliar with this, if I've got something that I can have some lateral and vertical guidance, um, yeah, of course I'll look out the window. But if I've got that guidance there, just down in front of me, I'd be daft not to uh, not to utilise it, wouldn't I? Rainbow. Plenty of red shafts down there at the moment. What's that wind doing? Because that that wind was absolutely shocking. 118 knots in the wrong direction. Oh, man. How are we doing for time? 
Oh, it still says we're going to be there pretty close to uh, 10 o'clock local time. That's all right. She was sitting the uh, she was sitting the right hand seat for a change. We don't often sit here. Oh, let's have a look at this arrival. So we're on the quote one on our arrival, which comes in via Capone, obviously. Look at all the airports. This is what you don't get on uh, on European charts. Literally, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, <laughs> twelve. Any more? That's not the twelve airports, and that's not including the one we're landing at. Thirteen airports on this chart. Uh, right, so this, if we, I said, I don't know if ADC are going to be around, but they were earlier. It's going to be a descend via the SID. So, that's... Well, two, four, zero, then... 13,250, then a quarter. Quote 8,000 at Volo, and from Volo, then I would imagine we'll get vectors because I think they're using runway. I think they were using runway one. We'll get some weather for that in a moment. HD descend via the Sid. Yeah, that is a. Very typical American ATC uh, instruction, isn't it? Descend by the seat, basically. Follow the chart. It's just easy ATC, isn't it? They don't have to do anything. Descend by the seat. I'm not giving you uh, altitudes to fly down to. Coming in via Kenny. Oh, descend via the descend via the star. <laughs> Do you know I? I should be in bed. I shouldn't be flying. I was up until 2 a.m. working this morning, and uh, I wasn't going to stream tonight. I'm just going to go to bed. Um, but then the wife said she got a lot of work to do. And I thought, oh, I would feel really guilty if I just go and snore next to her while she's working. So no, I'll come downstairs and I'll, uh, I'll stream. That should have been the, that should have been the main threat, by the way. That that was the main threat tonight when we were doing our departure brief. Me, overtiredness. And we know from experience that um, fatigue and tiredness is caused plenty of issues in the aviation industry. Oh, what's that platform altitude for this? 2,000 feet. Uh, minimums two, uh, 929. ILS frequency, because we will need that 109.3. Track is 008. Elevation is what? 729. Mr. Approach, straight out, hold it toddy. 2,600 feet. Fair enough. AT says had this I had this the other night. Couldn't hear ATC calls correctly. Thought the director was calling us by the wrong call sign repeatedly. Uh, you knew you were tired. What happens though, isn't it? I don't know, some airlines in some circumstances they uh, encourage strategic um, sort of nap breaks. I mean 
that potentially falls down when both pilots take one at the same time. Which happened recently, didn't it? Nothing happened. They just overflew the airport, didn't they, for about 20 minutes or something. And gave it the old, uh, when they finally got in touch, gave it the old, oh yeah, we, we had problems with our radio. <laughs> yeah, the problem was, no one was listening to it. HD, no, you can't do it on three quick flights. No. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to get a nap in between uh, Liverpool and the Isle of Man. Uh, Lulu, fatigue is insidious. It's easy to miss small details when you're tired. Well, Lulu, you were a, you were a 777 pilot doing long-haul flights. Pre well, presumably. I don't, I don't imagine you're in short-haul flights in the 777. So, trying to keep yourself sort of awake and um, busy, that, that's got to be more difficult than, than the short haul stuff where you're constantly busy all the time. <laughs> Dark Fury says it doesn't help if the ATC can't get the call sign right. <laughs> Speed Burger. Was that the Italian ATC? We need to go back to Italy for that. <laughs> Speed Burger 464. <laughs> Was that Nick that was being called Speedburger? I say Nick, it's got to have been Nick, because he's always Speedburger, isn't he, when he flies? Listen. I'm just going to look at the uh, ground chart as well for this airport. So once we've landed, I don't know where we're going to go. Oh, Dark, was it you? Were, were you flying British Airways? No, you weren't flying Airbus, were you? Uh, right, well, we're not international cargo. I would imagine they're just going to throw us somewhere in the west cargo apron. Maybe the north. Uh, let's have a look at some other charts and see what That tells us about uh, where where we can expect to uh, expect to park. Looks like we do have some Vasim uh, ATC around though, and that's there on screen now. Um, so uh, winds three one zero and eleven, gusting twenty one. Feel that from the left then as we're coming in. Ten statute miles visibility, a few clouds to 25,000 feet. Four degrees, it's quite cold. Altimeter is 3011. Arrival to expect vexes for visual approach runway one, landing departure runway one. Read back all runway instructions. Transponders required to be on all operating on runways and taxiways. Fear for departures indicate time field. Oh, that's information I'll find. We'll check that again, but it's good to know that at the moment. I think that's uh, I think that's still active. So this is quite nice now because we can actually draw, can't we, on our on our charts, which is pretty neat. Uh, 
Uh, so, anything close? This just lies. Hell nav, category CD, visibility. Okay, we're not doing that, that's fine. That's probably seven, we're not doing that. There are, so there's nothing on there that we need to mark on. <coughs> uh, so I would imagine then we'll either get off at Delta, perhaps? I might be pushing it. If not, it's probably going to be uh, Foxtrot. We'll taxi along Foxtrot to somewhere at the cargo apron, I can tell us where. <coughs> Uh, ATC says, so missing ATC calls, mishearing them, not understanding simple instructions, his own personal big warning, so he can tell the FO to be extra vigilant in those circumstances. But that's it, isn't it? That's the, the sign of being vigilant. You know what your triggers are, and if you know that that's happening to you, then you've got someone sat next to you, which is why I think the idea of dropping down to single pilot ops in the future is just crazy. Lulu says the red eye transatlantics were always the worst for catching us out. Everything is cozy in the dark, then blaring sun in your face for eastbound and busy terminal areas and holding. Yep, yeah, see them all coming and getting stacked up at, uh, at London Heathrow early in the early morning here. Hey, Stephen Mullen, hope you're doing well. Thanks for joining us. You join us on a. Uh, to quote Lulu, you, you join us on a cozy cargo ops flight. There's very little happening at the moment, which is nice. I don't think there's a pilot in the world that would uh, advocate for single pilot operations. It just seems like ludicrous. And in fact, anyone who is watching or, or listening to me right now, watching this channel, if you play in Microsoft Flight Simulator, you're a single pilot. How many of you can do it perfectly? Doing everything, doing the comms, doing the flows, um, the sort of self-briefing. And you've seen multiple times, I'll do something. And it's you guys that go, whoa, hang on. You've just missed something. You, and that's why you need two people there. It could be a digit that I'll have inserted backwards, or um, yeah, something so so small, but you guys will catch it out. And that's why everything's cross-checked with uh, with two people. Lulu also agreeing, single pilot ops is, uh, <laughs> the idea of that is terrifying. Dark Fury says that should, yeah, it should never be allowed. HD there, yeah, it says uh, it makes mistakes all the time, but that's with someone sat next to him. I mean, could you imagine being a single pilot and, I don't know, something crazy happening. Let's just talk about maybe a, uh, an engine out, yeah, engine out uh, on, on, on takeoff. All right, you know what to do. You know what to do. You've got, in something like the 320 or whatever, you've got the single flight plan, you've got autopilot to control it, but you still need to check and cross guard switches, uh, cross guard switches, make sure you're shutting the right one down. Of course you say, of course I would. Why would I ever shut the wrong one down? There's a light telling me which one it is now. Um, but th you've got comms to deal with as well. You've got to ultimately just fly the aircraft, make sure you're safe. You know, if, it's a, if you're flying somewhere where you've got terrain straight in front of you, I don't know, somewhere like Milan or something, then um, you can't do everything. 
can do everything perfectly now, whilst we're just sat in cruise and there's nothing happening. But, you know, in a little bit, it's going to get busier. And you know as well, if you watch the channel quite a bit, that when things start to heat up uh, here in the here in the flight deck on approach, or if it's a busy area with lots of ATC, lots of comms going off, um, I tend not to narrate and chat too much because I'm, I'm, I'm concentrating. My, my mental capacity becomes um, saturated with the tasks. So narrating to you guys is, you know, that, that, that drops off. First and foremost, we want to do what ATC is telling us to do. We want to make sure that we're not letting the aircraft get ahead of us. So, single pilot ops in a cruise at 34,000 feet for four hours, great. Departure and arrival, it's, it's, uh, that's different. Hey, Michal Patra, good evening. A300, yeah, it is, it is. Uh, Clever Trevor, one of the non-pilots amongst us that were confident enough to get the real aircraft down. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was saying right tower. Make sure those protected areas are indeed protected. Autopilot 1 and 2, engage, no decision height. Down you go. Uh, Lulu, that is a good shout as well. What about pilot incapacitation? That second pilot is redundancy at the end of the day as well, isn't it? Uh, HD, or oh, what about, yeah, okay, yeah, what about a dual hydraulic, green, yellow, no autopilot, no pitch trim, manual gear extension, radios, landing, uh, would well, you know what, HD, well, we had one, didn't we, dark, I don't know if it was you or Dan, someone broke my aircraft on arrival to Jersey, the weather was, it was shocking, it was awful, and we had a failure or something that knocked out the autopilot, and it meant I had suddenly got to manually fly the aircraft, while trying to shovel, troubleshoot the problem. And I openly admitted on the street, I could not do it. I could either fly the aircraft or I could try and solve the problem. And talk, I think ATC was online as well. I couldn't do it. I said, that, now there's, there's too much for me here. I'm not gonna troubleshoot the problem. I can't do this as it would be done in real life. I'll get the aircraft on the ground, but this is no longer a the, the way it will be done in real life anymore. So, just far too much to do. <laughs> Dark Fury says it wasn't him. <laughs> HC says, yeah, as well as much as there's some really good sim parts about the step up to the real aircraft with the sensory inputs that you've never felt before, uh, things you've never heard, lots going on behind them, etc. Yeah, it's a different environment. A very different environment. Anyone who's been in one of the proper sort of motion sense, uh, motion um, D level sims as well. The moment you get in that, it's completely different. I remember years ago, the first time I got in one, and yeah, I, I can't remember how old I was. I was, I was, I was about 17, 18, I might have been a bit older. Um, and I, the first time I got in one, and funnily enough, it was a 777. It was a 777 simulator down at Heathrow. I had three hours in it, one of the sort of best three hours of my life. And um, yeah, we flew, flew this thing. But the moment we started rolling down the runway, I did not expect to feel that force of being pushed back into my seat. I just didn't appreciate how well it could um, it could replicate it. And no D-level sim is 100% perfect. Trying to, they come close. They do a very good job, um, which is why you only need five landings and uh, takeoffs in the real real thing before you can. Uh, ferry passengers, but even that made me feel not not motion sick, but it just it 
took me completely by surprise because suddenly I'd gone from the comfort of being quite happy in a in a flight simulator, which back then, God knows which one it was, Flight Sim 2000 or something. Um, I was quite happy and comfortable, but then you throw yourself into this this other world, and the sensors get a, get a bit of an assault on them because you're not used to that. HD says then uh, add in the fact that it's real and there's a couple hundred people now behind you relying on you can also be a scary thing. I always remember, um, I, I can't remember if I, uh, if I read it or it was an interview or something like that, we're talking to an air traffic controller and air traffic controller says he, he has to treat it like a video game, you know a very serious one but he treats it like a video game because at the moment that he starts thinking I've got 2,000 people's lives in my hands right now so everyone would just crack up and walk out. Lulu, weirdly enough, you had a serious pilot incapacitation event many years ago whilst you were on the line. Probably the most stressful situation I've ever experienced. Yeah. I can... Uh, I could quite imagine. And of course, there was a really sad uh, event, wasn't there? Was it... Oh. Was it a Tarom flight? I don't know if that was an e A300 or A310. Time of flight where the, the captain, left hand seat, he had a heart attack or, or something. And the first officer didn't fly the jet. He lost the picture, they were in clouded, no visible horizon, and the turn carried on, and it shouldn't. And they ended up in the ground, all of them. Obviously, very sad. HD saying as well, the cadets' first line flights can usually be quite interesting. Just hearing the cabin crew banging the trolley around in the back in the galley can be quite terrifying as they've not heard it before in the Sims. Do you know <laughs> When they're in the Sims, can someone not be clattering around with a, uh, uh, with a trolley just outside? <laughs> just add, add to the immersion. <laughs> but yeah, like says, on a serious note as well, that's... Maybe not treat like a video game, but as long as you're safe, so too is everybody else. And I guess that's true, obviously. Oh, right. I'll just have a sort of get a bit of situational awareness out because there's a lot we need to plan for this uh, this flight. It's not like a not like a 320. Are we seriously saying we've got a waypoint called Ghana, followed by Capone? <laughs> You've got to give it to the Americans, they've got a sense of humour on them. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at uh, making sure we're all set up. So, we've got an ILS frequency required 109.3. Uh, course zero zero eight. That's, uh, that's fine. Hey, Bombtech, we are going to Chicago. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, Michal, it was a Taran flight. Yes, that uh, A three ten. I thought it was a three ten or a three hundred. It was one of those. Hey, Yardy, good to see you. Um, right, airfield elevation, what is that? 729, set that. It's under here. And what else have we got to set on, uh, on this thing? Decision. Height is 929. Let's back up here. That's quite high. 
Actually, no, it's not. It's only a couple hundred feet. It's just the elevation is uh, quite high, 729. This is taking forever. Okay, so that's this part set up. We now need to set up the box. So just checking then that the charts match the box. Let's go through that. So, Capone, Zabnu, quote, yellow. Quote, yellow. I have to yellow, it's a manual leg. And then Kenny, which I think is right. Yeah, initial approach fix, Kenny. Gilmy, yahoo. Uh, so <coughs> it's okay, so. That's fine. There's a little manual leg. We might get a, almost a vector then from Quotes or Kenny or we'll see what see what they want us to do. The HD does sound a bit like Sonic is flying around behind us, doesn't it? <laughs> We've gone back to the nineties. Oh, hang on. Someone is now uh, someone's now singing behind us. I'm not quite sure what that's all about. I'm not a fan of vocals. Uh, right, so that's fine. Uh, landing configuration uh, thirty forty. That's uh, that's fine. I don't think this aircraft has ground speed mini, does it? MDA nine two nine. Uh, oh, hang on. Get rid of that. We don't need decision height. Uh, wind correction. I have no idea how to work this out. I thought there would be a tool on here. I've got the winds. Winds 310 at 11. I don't want to have to do sin, cos, tan and work out the uh, the headwind component. I used to know it. To be fair, plus 10 sounds about right, uh, Trevor. So I'm going to go with that. It's definitely not 60 degrees or more. It's, what is it, 310 and we're landing 01. Ooh, actually. Could be. So it is 60 degrees. So it's more of a crosswind than headwind. Tell you what, I'll just cheat. Uh, so currently runway one, headwind is twelve point one, crosswind seven. We've got a later status as well, so I will brief that in a moment. Uh, yeah, so headwind's 12.1. Oh, 
Nine or twelve then. Let's get the latest weather on uh, on here. <clears throat> yeah, so there we go. It's now three four zero at fourteen. So increased a little bit, but the gusts have dropped slightly. Clear skies, five degrees. Altimeter is one zero one two now. Let's put the altimeter in here. I'm not sure if we do, do we? No. Two hundred eighty three miles to go. Will not bother. Top of descent, where would that be? Uh, that is going to be in about 11 minutes' time. <coughs> Alright, so let's just brief the arrival, which I think should be um, should be pretty straightforward. Like that. Uh, so essentially, what we are going to do is just descend by the star, uh, as it is. Top of descent, we'll leave it all in managed profile. Um, <coughs> Eight thousand feet at Yolo, um, and then from Yolo, we've got a manual leg, uh, which we can always. There's no ATC around. We'll just vector ourselves in from Yolo. We'll uh, fly sort of northeast, vector ourselves in for the uh, the ILS. Um, we've got that uh, course in. MSA is 2,600 feet. We know we've got uh, a decent wind from the left-hand side as we're coming in. Uh, there's nothing on there that's concerning for me. Obviously, transition altitude is 11,000 feet as we're coming down. Um, platform altitude is 2,000 feet. It's a slightly shallower glide slope than normal, 2.75. Uh, what are the pappies set to? Let's just have a quick look. Uh, does it say it on here? <coughs> Runway 1. Uh, oh, do we have any pappies? We don't have any pappies. Oh, it doesn't look like there are any. 46 meters wide. No puppies. Okay, well, weather's good and clear, so we should be visual with it. So we know what profile we're going to do, and we're going to leave it to leave it as we get down. Once we've landed, uh, get off a delta. If not, it's going to be Foxtrot crossing the to five, and then we'll just park somewhere. <coughs> Threats to be aware of, threat and error management, uh, unfamiliarity, tiredness. Um, yeah, we'll just keep an eye on that. Uh, let's keep an eye on that profile. How far away is Kenny? Kenny is 11 miles out, so as long as we're between three, 4,000 feet by the time we get to Kenny, we'll pick up the clients and we should be fine. So that's just from my own personal descent planning point of view, make sure we're not too high on, uh, on the way down. Uh, the go around is straightforward, a quick brief on that is straight out. Uh, hold up toddy. At 2,600 feet, the strangest Mr. Approach altitude in a while, uh, that I've seen for a while. Bear in mind then, that's a little bit of a threat, because it's quite a low altitude, that 2,600 feet. 
There we are. Hey, Subsonic, good to see you. Right. Any questions from the chat regarding the brief? If you want to know where I'm going to start configuring, I didn't really run through that, but obviously 250 at quote, to be honest, we'll probably start uh, slowing down to our green dot speed uh, as we get to quote, as we leave quote. Um, flaps 1 as we leave YOLO. Uh, it's not flaps 1, is it? It's, uh, it's 15. And then 15.30 for the glide. And... Uh, 30, 40, 4, full flaps landing. Job done. Hey Dojo, you want an A330? Headwind or Latin VFR? Definitely the headwind. Definitely the headwind. Latin VFR is great if you are on... Um, yeah, if you're on... Xbox. <coughs> now we've got auto brake. Uh, no. I like it when I ask has anyone any questions and no one actually answers. <laughs> take take that. Take that as the win it's intended to be. Check our fuel. See how we're uh, how we're doing with that. Ten tons. Um, and our fuel flow at the moment is about seven ton an hour. Just over. So we've got about an hour, hour ten minutes. Lulu has a question. Go for it, Lulu. If it's something technical about the 300, I can't answer it. <laughs> I have no idea. Michal's going to ask his question on final. Perfect. I'll completely ignore that then. Does the thing actually have a landing performance calculator? No, uh, no, just a just a take on performance calculator. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> Lulu, what's Airbus do? <laughs> uh, hopefully, flies. <laughs> it flies well. Slow down a bit though now. It looks like we're laying five minutes later than planned. Look at that, we've still got 112 knots headwind. We'll be able to do the return journey in a fraction of the time. We're not doing the return journey tonight though. I'm absolutely shattered, so that's not happening. Before the uh, descent, once again, I'm just going to remind you uh, that you can get this aircraft with 15% off right now using the link in the, uh, in the stream. 50% off if you buy the Airbus A300 and the new Rockford Airport, which we are going to be landing at in about half an hour's time. Also, if you haven't yet checked it out, do check out the uh, link to the Aviation Merch Store, Aviation Isle. Um, again, link in the video description or uh, uh, linked in the chat as well. Get yourself some great uh, aviation merchandise. Their canvases look epic. And if you haven't done so already, hit that like button on the stream as well. I 
Uh, Zach, is it the Phoenix A320? No, no, this is the uh, Inibuilds A300. HD, does the switch on the EFB need to be on ILS? Yes, it does. Not yet. Um, so we're, we're still following the nav, uh, nav line. But once we uh, once we want to pick that on, pick up the ILS. Yes, definitely. Otherwise, uh, yeah, we're not going to pick anything up. We're, we're definitely going to have to land visually if I don't do that. Did say clear skies though, and it looks like that is exactly what we're going to be getting. Five minutes, top of descent. I just find the USA in the simulator looks so detailed. Even at this altitude. I'm always in awe at the size of the United States. and how you could drive for hundreds of miles and not come across another living being. Human being, that is. really do love this livery. It's just so... so dirty. HD, you'd love to live in the States for the space. Do it! You could fly for spirit wings. <laughs> or Allegiant. Britain is indeed getting very crowded. More and more houses being built in the small villages around where we are, certainly. The thing that really winds me up is when developers come in and want to build three, four, five, even six hundred houses on a plot of farmland. Well, that's great. But we don't actually make the schools any bigger. We don't add more doctors or hospitals or other resources. We just cram everyone into the same place and expect them to all to use the same facilities that you've had for the last 60 years. HD, your goal is to make millions so you don't need to make or win HD. There's a difference between the two. <laughs> uh, Michal, you've got to ask your, uh, ask your question now. Um, or dentists, absolutely, yeah. Um, while descending on approach in the 320, speed 200, that's fine. Your nav says ILS intercept overshoot by eight, uh, five to eight miles. What's the best way to descend faster, if any? Uh, open descent, wind that speed up, don't exceed uh, VMO, and get the speed brakes out. Right, top of descent's coming up. Uh, Zach says it's awful. <laughs> this is the USA drove from Denver back home to Dallas in the worst stretch of godforsaken farmland with no cell service for five hours. Oh god, yeah, I suppose I never really thought about the cell service all over the... Uh, all over the the USA. Oh wow, uh, this is Lake Michigan isn't it? I just realised. Is it? It will be won't it? Lake Michigan. Mm. 
The only time I've ever seen Lake Michigan in the sim is in years gone by. Departing from Meryl C. Magus, of which we always departed off runway 36 and we turned left. We never ever dared turn right because that put us over water away from the land and we had no idea where that took us in a little Cessna 152. Oh, HD, that's getting into uh, into dangerous territory. But people will agree with you. And of course, we've got uh, general elections will be coming up soon, won't they? We definitely need to stay clear of that on the channel. <laughs> <laughs> could, could go downhill very quickly. Uh, Asif, do I prefer long or short flights? I just like flights, Asif. I just like flights. And I think, so yesterday we did a long flight. Was it yesterday? Oh my god, it was only yesterday. We did a five hour flight, didn't we? As we flew to EasyJet's most southerly destination. Um, Massa Alarm in the middle of bloody nowhere in Egypt. Yeah, Michal, it's okay. I don't think you can get pregnant. Then again, anything's possible in this day and age. Lulu, you can't wait for a 15-hour Los Angeles to Sydney stream when the 777 releases. <laughs> I, I'll do it as a shared cockpit. <laughs> but you know those comfort breaks we were talking about, Lulu? <laughs> I'll be on one for the duration. Uh, Dark Fury, with anyone, any, anyone that's going to sit there for 15 hours while I don't. Uh, Ashif, you've recently purchased the sim, very new to the community, where well, you've been made to feel very welcome here, Ashif. Um, been watching a lot of the uh, tutorials uh, on the Phoenix A320, uh, going through the playlist. Yeah, I think hopefully that will give you a good a good basis and understanding of how to uh, how to fly the aircraft then uh, as if and start with airports like uh, those that were in that tutorial because I think I think it's Prague we flew to for um, for that tutorial in the Phoenix which is just a nice easy airport to get into um, there's no terrain around it you know it's there's no daft procedures it's just and I even think the standard arrival route takes you straight onto the ILS as well. <laughs> HD, you need to start streaming again. You don't need to fly, mate. You don't need to fly. <laughs> I'm going to set up a channel for you. <laughs> HD says. <laughs> I'd pay to watch that. <laughs> what was it Ricky Gervais said in a video that I saw recently? He's going to have both his legs amputated, wheels attached, and identify as a wheelbarrow. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, I'm getting far too old and grumpy to care. Uh, Sam, the freight version is certainly performing better than the passenger one. I don't think I've ever flown the passenger version. I've always flown. Um, I've always flown the cargo variant whenever I've flown the uh, the A300. Uh, Miha says Tiva um, was a surprise because the final miles have to perform. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, Miha, t don't do Tiva if you're new to flying that. That's a scary experience. <laughs> Alvi says HD run for Prime Minister. You've got my vote. Oh, I think HD get everyone's vote. <laughs> Uh, Ashif says the biggest challenge for him is programming in the uh, the box. Right, so yeah, the uh, multifunctional control display unit. Um, that is one thing, though. That the more you do it, the the, the better you'll get at it, and it will become automatic. Um, using the the acronym DIFRIPS for the data page, then the init page, the flight plan page, the radnav page. In it B page, and then the secondary flight plan, and it just becomes it, it will become sort of se second nature. Lulu says the McDo is confusing at first glance. This from a Boeing pilot, where I always end up as though I'm, I'm going down the rabbit hole, page after page after page, buried within pages in the uh, <laughs> in the book, in the flight management system of a Boeing. Nearly there. <sighs> hey, we can't see. We can't see. No, we. We can't see Magus Field, can we? Is it down here? Is this it? Is this downtown Chicago? Oh man, I wonder if it is. Obviously, it doesn't exist in real life anymore, but they've thrown it back into the simulator for posterity, haven't they? I think it might be. I love Magus Field. This, it's like going back oh, nearly 30 years. Right, I think we need to start uh, start our descent then. We're, uh, we're pretty much there, so... <coughs> Start following the uh, following the profile. Down we go. Two four zero blue. Megas is that, is that the new Vegas? How it, I don't even know how it would be pronounced. Is it Megis? Magis? Megas? Megas? I don't know. Metal C. Magus, that's how I always pronounced it, rightly or wrongly. What mode am I in? I can't see. Profile speed, profile descent, and nav. That's good enough for me. HD okay, always thought it was Megs. Could be, no idea. <laughs> Lulu, not quite up to the lofty heights of my adopted city, Las Vegas. <laughs> Las Vegas. Well, then there's the other one as well, as well, of course, Skeg Vegas on the e, uh, on the east coast. Right, we shall 
keep an eye on things here. Hopefully it'll lock onto this program, uh, this uh, profile, and we'll uh, thrust is rolling back. And it's going to level off where we want it to as well. It's zapping two four zero. Perfect. Uh, Dimitri says he lived in Rockford and uh, makes clothes like 15 years ago. I know, but for those of us who started our love of aviation in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, for sort of 15 years, Meggie's Field was where we all started because that was the default airport, and I'm sure it's down here. Which means that somewhere down here we've got, is it Midway? Medway Airport? Oh, there it is. Yeah, there it is. That's Medway. Yeah, so that is. That's Megis. There's Medway, which means that O'Hara is there. So how many people... Oh, this is nostalgia. How many people who've been flying flight simulator for so, so many years since it first started took off, turned left, landed on one of the many runways that O'Hara had to offer, turned around, flew back, got over the city and then circled the land around here and then just did it again and if you were feeling very brave or rebellious you'd hop to Medway for a bit and in the very early flight simulators, flight in 98 I think, O'Hare was one of the first airports that had other air traffic coming into it oh that's that's true nostalgia When it all started in 1995, I think Megasfield was even the default location in one of the earlier flight simulators in 1995, but I, would, I don't know, someone else might know that. That's where I, 1995 was the version I started on. HD, you took the 737 down to Champagne. <laughs> Champagne. I have no idea what that is. Okay, profile's still looking okay. I think we're about 100 feet beneath it, which is all. Lulu says Midway was uh, an interesting landing back in the day, especially in winter, short runways and absolutely no runoff space. Uh, HT says you could follow the AI traffic doing a circuit. Yeah, you could. They were, they were like, you little think back of them, they were, like, they were like cartoons, weren't they? I used to sit on the ground uh, to make this, wait to see one of those um, aircraft, like, flying from right to left at a 90 degree angle straight in front of me take off and then follow it to uh, follow it to O'Hare oh reminiscing okay so I'm going to get down 8,000 feet 3012 I'm on local pressure than 8,000. <laughs> Ronald says good afternoon from Chicago. Ronald, after all this time, Guess where we are. Guess where we are. I'll give you a clue. 
Magus is over there, Medway is down there, and O'Hare is over there. I have no idea where that is. That's what I'm not. I never ventured far enough out in my early flight simulator days to know what airport that was. Okay, well we're going to start concentrating now, because this is the bit where if it's going to go wrong, it'll be here. I always remember, Lulu, that Medway did seem to have a lot of things around it. It almost looked like it was built in the middle of a residential area. We are indeed, Ronald, south side of uh, Chicago. That's exactly where we are. Coming into Rockford. Still got a lovely strong headwind holding that V. Uh, VNAV profile extremely well. Sean, you started out with Microsoft Flight Simulator 2004, A Century of Flight. That Was that the one that had Concorde on it? Or oh, that might have been Flight Sim 2000. Yeah, I think Flight Sim 2000 had Concorde on it, didn't it? I could never fly that thing. Crashed it plenty of times. Uh, right, how far out are we? Forty-four miles. Mm. I was looking at doing a little direct, I don't think. Why not work? How far out is Kenny? We need to be four thousand feet at Kenny. And we're f well, forty miles out from that. Mm, might be doable. Let's just wind that speed up a bit. Let's start dropping the aircraft down. If we can go direct Kenny, then we're pretty much on the ILS straight away. I can't recall if this has a fixes page. I don't think it does. I would say it's 2 6, so uh, we're safe to get down to. Uh, safe to get down to 4,000 feet. The reason I say 4,000 feet is because Kenny is about 12 miles away, which should have us on a nice, uh, on a nice profile. HD spoilers and reverses out. <laughs> the winds, uh, Marcus, are actually really helping us. We've got a headwind of about 70 knots at the minute. So it's really helping to slow us down. Okay, so 4,000 blue. It does make us drop like a stone, doesn't it? Look at that. Mm -hmm. 
36 miles. Might be able to make this. We get down to about 10,000 feet, get them spoils away, go direct Kenny, and jobs are good. We've no passengers on board, so we're going to have to please them by having a nice uh, shallow descent. I mean, we're only doing about 4,000 feet per minute, so we're not not doing anything too badly on, on toward. Hey, PSV, good to see you. Right, speed 250. So coming up at 10,000 feet. Direct Kenny, it's a uh, perfect. Speed brakes obviously still extended. What happened with that? We can now put those away. Final approach, which is old Airbus for uh, approach phase. Okay, so we'll turn on the ILS now, hopefully pick that up. We shouldn't be too far away now. How, uh, how far away are we? 29 miles, we should pick that up soon. Just confirm that frequency, 1093, 109300. That's fine. Not got it just yet. Pop that back into profile and start reducing our speed down to green dot. Although I look like I'm far too high there. I'll get the speed brakes back out. Let's get down. Look at the noise it makes. Okay, first stage of flats. So uh, we start configuring. Still no uh, ILS information just yet. Platform altitude is 2,000 feet, so I'm happy to continue. Kenny is 2,500 feet, so let's just set 2,500 feet now for Kenny. Next stage, flaps and slats, so that's 1515. Speed scale one, that's fine. That's my bad. That's paperwork. Yeah, we've got down. Probably a bit too early now. Well, there's the ILS. Well, in fact, 
it's uh, it's moving over to capture it. We're pretty much on it. There we go, lock start. Just need to get this aircraft to slow down. Yeah? I was looking to try and level the aircraft off a little bit earlier on and use VS. Do we not have a VS mode? Oh, we do. I'm not even sure how we use VS mode on this thing. Oh, well, never mind. Taking the scenic route over. Uh, I mean, this is called Chicago, but it's miles away from Chicago, isn't it? This is like London Oxford Airport. Fifteen miles out then, and I think I can just about see the runway. HD is the Ryanair destination for Detroit. <laughs> like Charles de Roy for Brussels. It's nowhere near Brussels. Rockford traffic, UPS 1173 is 14 miles out, ILS runway 0. Uh, so what was our map speed? It was 147, wasn't it? Lulu, yeah, that's fair as well. Charles de Gaulle is a long way from uh, the centre of Paris. Right, to be fair, this is when we should have been at 2,500 feet. We should have been at 2,500 feet here at, um, at Kenny, so... Yeah, we are probably about... About 7, 8 miles too early. That's flaps, 15, 15. So now we're uh, on profile speed. Glide slope is armed, localizer captured, cat two, flight directors one, command one. Do we not? Can we do? Can we do dual autopilot? Oh, we can. Now we're cat three. Eight miles out. Mr. Protoss should reminder is 2,600 feet. Go around is straight out, holding at the toddy waypoint. That's glide slope start. 2,600 Mr. Protoss set. Gear down. Spoils armed.
all the lights on. And pops full. Rockford traffic, EPS 173, 5150, runway 01. And landing checklist. Minimums continue, cabin secure, core altitude is 2600 set. ECAM memo, oh, landing, I'm not sure about the no blue bit. Right, let's see what happens. What about R5 control? voice on this old aircraft. Three, to force this aircraft down. Two, Manual brakes. Oh, let's find somewhere to park. I always feel like it's a real challenge to actually get that aircraft to drop down. So I've got the passenger terminal is just there. And the cargo stuff is all a little bit further on. But yeah, this is the new airport that has just been released, of which, if you purchase this, you can then get the Airbus A350% off at the moment. <laughs> Lulu says, not a real cargo haul. I didn't require post landing pavement inspection. <laughs> not sure about this uh, this guy here, though. He's gonna just going to get uh, sucked into an en the engine. Anyway. That's one thing that I do hope Microsoft Flight Simulator sorts itself out. The, uh, the next incarnation has been released in a few months. Right, we'll follow the line and stop at the end of it. Follow the yellow brick road. And then we'll 
for the replay off. If you are on your way out, guys, please don't forget to leave a like as you go. We'll have a little look around this airport as well, actually. We're parked in the right place. There's loads of UPS trucks, so it uh, looks good for me. I'll leave those engines running for the sake of the, uh, the replay. Yeah, nice detailed airport, and as I say, if you want to kickstart your cargo hit career, then uh, now is a great time with this uh, this airport, uh, Rockford, and uh, oh, very nice, um, because it is primarily a cargo uh, airport. However, there are, as you can see, a few passenger gates. Um, have we got? Yeah, once again, this is what I call the right amount of um, the right amount of interior because oh, there's twins there. Uh, they've not gone over the top with <coughs> detailed interiors, but if you're parking up outside, you'd be able to see it, and that's enough. Uh, but yeah, just a, a quick sort of tour around uh, the field, and. It's a great alternative, actually, this place, rather than going into downtown Chicago, where if you're going to struggle with frame rates, well, you're not going to struggle here, because here it just looks, you know, pretty, uh, pretty isolated, to uh, to be honest. But yeah, um, as I say, link in the uh, video description and uh, the chat if you're watching. If you want to pick this airport up, I say brand new, and get yourself the. Uh, the Airbus 300 at the same time. FedEx, as w uh, do FedEx fly here? I can't remember if FedEx do. Obviously, UPS do. Uh, I don't think they've gone into too much details inside the terminal, inside the cargo buildings. No, that's fine. Uh, but as we just pulled up there and saw all the uh, the UPS trailers and things, that's uh, that's kind of what you want to see. Let's have a quick look then at the replay. Uh, Yari says you wouldn't think in Chicago. To be honest, looks too rural. Yeah, it's. Um, Deceiving, isn't it? Probably why it's more catered towards cargo than it is towards passenger. So let's have a uh, let's have a look at the arrival. One of the best bits. Get a nice view there. It does look very rural when uh, when you look at it from uh, from these sorts of views. There's hardly anything around, is there? Night HD. See you next time. <coughs> Eurotexan says all the trackers have to go in the cargo hold for the next leg. I tell you, that wind has slowed us down something chronic. That flight should normally take about an hour and 40 minutes. It's taken us just over two hours because of the wind. LA Kids, nice interstate highway access. Well, yeah, definitely. Which is just what you want for a cargo airfield. <coughs> but this is, again, just a reminder of what the size of somewhere like the USA. It's still Chicago. Love the terrain map in there, that looks cool. It's still Chicago, but it's absolutely miles out. Yardy is an hour and a quarter away from uh, O'Hare. <laughs> yeah, or, or 10 minutes in a jet. Cool view though. I really like that. I 
I'm guessing that's not a shopping mall. Although, I mean, it could be, but I bet it doesn't do much business. I'm loving this view with the shadow. That's awesome. Landing gear, flaps, slats, you can see the whole lot. That's brilliant. What was the landing rate anyway when we touched down? Can anyone remember? My god, it sounds like the cargo's just all broke loose after we've touched down. That's loud. Yeah, Aaron Myers, I, I really like this aircraft now. I think it works beautifully. As long as we were in the touchdown zone and near the centre line, that'll do for me. But 200, that 240, anywhere between 2 and 300, that's, that's spot on. We'll take that. Two four five, perfect, Marcus. Definitely take that. That's uh, that's a win in my book. Aircraft like this. I'm guessing that's a glitch in the scenery and not actually a. Uh, it could be a fire trap. I really thought I thoroughly enjoyed that flight. It was uh, it was relaxing. It was a great airport to land at at the end of it. So, the guys, I hope you've uh, yeah, hope you've enjoyed that one. It's uh, always fun to do something different, and you know I love flying over the USA. It's just a completely different kind of terrain to what we're uh, what we are uh, what we're used to. So, thank you everyone for joining me uh, for the last uh, three hours or so whilst we've been. Uh, checking out that new airport and of course the A300 which we love to fly occasionally. It's still Airbus isn't it? Love a good Airbus flight. Uh, Yari, since when did the A300 have a yoke? Yeah, it's a, yo it's a yoke. A300 and the A310 both had yokes. Not until the 320 came out didn't get the, uh, did we get the side stick. Thank you so much everyone for watching tonight. Huge shout out as always to our Easy Jets and Pilot channel members and of course our uh, those of you who have helped donate, contribute and uh, support the stream and the channel this evening. Uh, one final reminder, buy Rockford Airport, buy the A300 from Innerbuilds now, link in the video description at the top. 15% off if you buy uh, those, 15% off the Airbus. A300, which I think is a great deal if you want to begin your cargo uh, flight. If you're into aviation merchandise, then again, check out the uh, the link in the video description for some cool merchandise uh, stuff as uh, as well. Loads of stuff on there for you to check out. I'm going to leave you with this final replay, and until our next live stream, thanks so much for watching. I'll uh, see you all again very, very soon. Have a great evening, everyone. Thanks for watching. Speak to you all later. Good night.